Shalom Habarim. Hello, friends. Good to be with you here on this Sunday morning or whenever it is that you are watching this video. Earlier this week, I was going to the grocery store and I was walking up and down those one-way aisles, keeping my distance from the people in front of me, when I got close enough to a mother and daughter to overhear their conversation. And this mother and her teenage daughter were talking, and the, the daughter said to her mother, she said, Mom, tell me, how does it feel to have raised the perfect daughter? And without missing a beat, the mother turns to her daughter and she says, I don't know. Why don't we call grandma when we get home and ask her? Well, I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, uh, especially to my own mother. I think your card should be coming in the mail if it hasn't already arrived. Um, but I, I also realize that today is not just a day of celebration. I know that today is a day of pain for a lot of people. I know that there are a lot of women out there who wish they could be mothers, but for some reason or another, it hasn't happened for them. I also realize that today is a day that many people are filled with sadness because their mothers have passed away. And I realize for even more people, Mother's Day is a day of sadness because you didn't have a good relationship with your mother. So for whatever reason, if you find today to be a difficult day, I just want to tell you, I see you. And I'll explain what that means here shortly. But as I was preparing for today's sermonette, I was reminded of a story that I heard from a former professor a couple years ago. Uh, her name was Katie Geneva Cannon. We called her Dr. Cannon. And many of Dr. Cannon's stories were actually sad stories. They were stories about growing up as a black woman in the South and some of the struggles that she had to experience. But this one actually came from a different location. I, I think it was New York. I don't have all the details fresh in my memory. But Dr. Cannon told the story of riding a subway. And she sat down in her seat. It was cold, and she was nestled into the seat and trying to keep warm. And a couple of young men got on the subway as well. One of them sat across the aisle from her, and, and then the second one came in, and he tossed his duffel bag and hit Dr. Cannon and sat down in the seat beside his, his buddy. And Dr. Cannon, she, she just kind of sat up, and, and she looked over at this man, and she said, excuse me, what are you doing? You just hit me with your duffel bag. And this guy says, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. And I remember Dr. Cannon's words exactly. She said, you didn't see me? Am I not big enough? Am I not black enough? How did you not see me? And it makes me think of a story from the Bible where, where Jesus is talking to his disciples, and there's this, this woman, and, and she's been ignored by the society around her. She's been kind of outcast from the rest of the in-group. She's seen as unimportant. And the first thing that Jesus says is he gathers his disciples, and, and they're talking about this woman. He, he asks them, do you see her? And I realize that, that there's many times when we don't see each other. There's times that we see people as, as insignificant or, or unimportant, and, and we walk right past them whether it's a beggar on the street or a family member that we no longer want to talk to, we ignore them. And sometimes we ignore them so well that we don't even see them. Well, on this Mother's Day, I, I want to lift up a mother to you, somebody from the Bible that doesn't often get a lot of attention. And her name is Hagar. And I'm going to simplify things a little bit here. We're going to call Hagar the second wife of, of Abraham um, because I try to make this appropriate for the children. Um, second wife of, of Abraham is about as good as I can do. Um, she was a, a slave of Abraham's wife as well. Well, Abraham and his wife, his first wife, Sarah, are having a difficult time having children. So Abraham and Hagar actually get together and they have a child. 
But when Hagar first finds out that she's pregnant, Sarah gets very jealous. You see, especially in those days, to have a child meant everything. This was the way you passed on your lineage, your heritage, your wealth. All of this was passed on through your children. So Sarah got very jealous of Hagar, and she began bullying her. And eventually, Hagar just throws up her hands. She says, I've had enough. And she runs away into the desert with the baby in her belly. Well, as Hagar is lying there beside a spring in the middle of the desert, she's visited by an angel. And the angel speaks to her and says, Hagar, don't worry. I know this is difficult. I know this is a challenge. But God sees you, and God will bless you. And there, Hagar gives a new name to God. For the first time in all the Hebrew Bible, God is called El Roy. And it says, um, Hagar says, you are El Roy, the God who sees me. El is a generic name for God. And Roy, or it's probably more pronounced Roy, Roy, something like that. Um, The God who sees me. So Hagar goes back and, and the child is born. And years go by and finally Sarah has a child as well. And this jealousy keeps going back and forth between these two women, uh, which is one reason why I am not a fan of polygamy. I'm not advocating polygamy. Please keep that in mind. Uh, A lot of jealousy going on, a lot of back and forth. Um, Hagar's son mocks Sarah's son. And again, there's back and forth. And eventually, Sarah kicks Hagar out of the family. And Hagar is sent away again into the wilderness. But this time, she has very little with her. All she has is a little water and a little food. And as she's wandering around the wilderness and the food and the water run dry, she realizes that she's going to die, and so is her son. So she lays her son under a bush, and she begins to walk away. She tries to get some distance between the two of them because she simply cannot listen to him cry himself to death. Well, then an angel appears again, and it's perhaps the same angel And we read this in Genesis 26. The angel says, Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. The boy's name was Ishmael. And Ishmael means God hears. So we have these two different Hebrew names, these ancient Hebrew names. We have Elroy, And we have Ishmael. God sees me and God hears. But let's be honest, sometimes it feels like God doesn't see us. At least for me, I should speak for myself. It feels sometimes like God doesn't see me and that God doesn't hear me. And I look around in our world today and all the things that we're struggling with, all the things that we're dealing with, And I'm wondering if God sees that, if God hears our pleas for help. You know, God, do you see the people who are struggling, the people who are dying, the 77,000 or so in the U.S. alone who have died from COVID-19? God, are you aware that that in in our world here just in the last couple months, you know, we we had an unarmed black man jogging for exercise, and he was chased down and killed by some white men. And I've gone, I want to cry out on God, God, where are you? Do you see us? Do you hear us? And the Bible tells us, yes, God does. Now, I firmly believe that God can and does do amazing things, great things here on earth. But I also am a firm believer that God has given us a lot of that responsibility as well. In the New Testament, Jesus, sorry, in the New Testament, Paul says that we are to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Jesus was here and he taught us how to live. He taught us how to do these things and how we're supposed to treat one another. And now we have this responsibility to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And I would add the eyes and ears as well. Elroy. 
Ishmael, God who sees me, God hears. So I want to say, I see you. I hear you. I want to be the eyes and ears of God, just as we're called to be the hands and feet. So to that business person who is trying to make things work, trying to keep things open because there's employees and family members depending on him during this difficult time, I want to say to that business person, I see you. To the people of color who are struggling, not only dying at an increasing rate from COVID-19, but, but also dying just because they were jogging in the wrong neighborhood, I want to say, I hear you. To the mothers and fathers who are now working from home and are doing more than they ever had planned to do because now they also find themselves homeschooling their children and not knowing how to do it, I want to say, I see you. To all of those for whom Mother's Day is difficult, for whatever reason that might be, I want to say, I hear you. I see you. I hear you. My friends, we are called to be the hands and feet, the eyes and ears of God here on earth, for we are the body of Christ. So now I ask you, what are we going to do about it?